we're getting to the end of March, and uh, here in Maine, that means we're just about the end of uh, maple sugaring season. Now down here, I'm kind of in central Maine right now, the season's pretty much already over. In northern Maine though, it's still, still going a little bit. Uh, basically, maple sugaring season is uh, when the nights are below freezing and the days are above freezing. And it's 50 degrees, degrees today, so we can pretty much say that it's over down here anyway. Um, but I thought this would be a good opportunity in honor of the 2022 maple sugaring season uh, to discuss the difference between sugar maple and red maple and how you can tell the difference. But uh, it's pretty simple to tell the difference if you're looking at the leaves. What's a challenge, however, is trying to tell the difference between those two species this time of year when there are no leaves on the trees or even when you're dealing with very large individuals uh, where you can't necessarily see the tops. Um, so let's get into it. So we'll start off with sugar maple. Now this is a uh, mature sugar maple. It's nice and old, probably around a century or so, but uh, it has the most quintessential characteristic bark of a sugar maple that you could possibly ever get. And um, what makes sugar maple bark so unique and characteristic is that it will raise up from the sides. So you can see right here, the bark is kind of peeling up, but it's raising from side to side, right? And of course, if you look, you kind of get some, some uh, raising from the, the uh, tops and bottoms of these plates, but the plates are very thick. No matter what plate you touch, it's, it's pretty difficult to, uh, to chip them off. And when you do, they come off in thick plates, you know? Same here, you know, you have some, some uh, rise from the bottom, but it's one continuous thick piece. Uh, but for the most part, definitely on average, the plates are only rising from the sides. That's sugar maple. All right, now let's look at red maple. This is a quintessential red maple. Now before we get into the characteristics of the bark itself, uh, there's one important difference between the two. Uh, this tree is maybe 12 inches in diameter. I didn't bring my D-tape with me, but uh, about 12 inches. And it's pretty senescent. You know, you see obvious signs of decay. Whereas the other tree was right over there, if you can see it. Um, it's probably a good, I don't know, two, two and a half feet in diameter. And the differences between those diameters is uh, not random. This really is as large as red maple will grow. Now don't get me wrong, uh, they can grow larger, but it has a shorter lifespan on average. And once it starts getting to about you know, a foot in diameter, it will start rotting from the inside out. Uh, and I think part of that is because uh, you do get these stump sprouts um, that tend to uh, decay or fall first and that introduces rot into the stem. I don't know. I haven't really looked into the literature too much. Um, that's just my observation from being a forester. But um, anyway, so the size is a dead giveaway. Whenever you see a very large maple, chances are it's going to be sugar maple. Not always, but usually. So the challenge really comes when they're both about 12 inches in diameter. But um, anyway, so let's get into the bark. So you still see some peeling, but unlike the sugar maple, you start to see a lot of the peeling coming from the tops and bottoms of the plates. You do see a little side to side again, but uh, it's it's the the most obvious and salient peeling is coming from the tops and bottoms. And then the pieces are much flakier. It just kind of flakes off. They're not coming off. You can peel off large chunks like that. Um, but on average, the pieces are just a lot flakier. You can kind of just pick them off. And when you do, it's just a lot easier. They take no force at all. Uh, now, this all comes with a great grain of salt. Um, you know, I've personally seen, I don't even know how many, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of, of uh, maples, both red and sugar. But uh, these characteristics can kind of blend together. Um, so you can't, you can't take something as a, a given 100% of the time but at least 95% of the time, these are gonna be the uh, pheno, phenotypes that kind of present themselves. Um, and that's a pretty good way you can tell the difference. 
Now, like I said, this isn't going to be true 100% of the time, so you do have to take into consideration the times um, when it's not necessarily the case, especially if you need good accuracy for whatever you happen to be doing. Maybe you're tapping, uh, tapping trees for maple syrup, and of course sugar maple is going to produce more sugar, it's going to be more profitable, um, so you really need to make sure that you're tapping the right trees. Uh, well, luckily, there's still a pretty good and obvious difference between the buds. Okay, so I found a sapling here, and this is a sugar maple. And sugar maples have these pointy brown buds. And um, what's important about these buds is that from the ground, you really can't see them. The stems just kind of look like they're dead. Now let's look at red maple. All right, so I can't actually find a red maple sapling that I can show you the buds on. So I'm just going to throw up a picture right there and um, show you the difference. So those maples are going to be visible from the ground. They're going to look like red Christmas bulbs that the tree is just billowing in. So I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see it, but um, I'm working up at a crown of about three red maples right now. And at least from here, with my eyes, I can see the red buds um, just dotting the twigs. So it's a pretty, pretty dead giveaway that those are red maple. Now as I'm walking back, uh, I did want to share one thing. And that is to kind of drop your ego when you're doing species ID. I think it's funny, a lot of people who are really into the outdoors or forestry, um, they treat their species identification with a lot of pride, even when they've been in the field for a very long time. It's very common with people, you know, like freshman forestry students. Um, I used to uh, manage some interns and, you know, they all took a lot of pride in their knowledge and ability in uh, identifying trees. But even some experienced foresters would have a degree of that pride as well. Um, what's important to understand is that I have seen ex foresters who have had 20 years experience misidentify very common species just because there's so much variability in the forest. Um, and then there are certain species, I'm actually not sure if this is the case with uh, sugar maple and red maple, I don't think so, but certainly with spruces, I think it's more common with the more primitive um, coniferous uh, species. Uh, red spruce and black spruce hybridize something like 85% of the time. So if you ask a forester from um, the northern regions, whether it's Canada or New England, if they can identify um, a black spruce from a red spruce, and they answer yes, they are lying. Not to you, but to themselves. Um, so yeah, have fun with this. Uh, don't get any arguments with your friends about what a certain species is. It doesn't really matter, unless you're selling it to a mill, then they might get upset. Till next time.